don't be scared to shoot higher ISOs. And when we're out shooting nature and birds and whatnot, it's really easy to want the perfect shot, but light rarely, rarely cooperates. So if you're shooting with big lenses and stuff like that, if you know your camera, dial in your ISO by using auto, find what's comfortable for you, but don't ruin the shot because you want the perfect 100 ISO and you end up missing it because you just were too stubborn to edit it in post or something. We've got amazing opportunities now in post, noise reduction and all sorts of crazy things. So my first tip is do not worry about shooting at 100 ISO all the time. So guys, today we're checking out the 200 to 600 from Sony and shooting some birds out here, some birds of prey. We've got some short-eared owls, we've got some hawks, we've got eagles flying around, and we're just testing this thing out to see what it can do. So here we go. Now, of course, these birding tips aren't specific to this lens. No matter what you're shooting with, they're gonna be able to help you out. When I head out shooting, I have a goal of getting one great photo. That's it, it really takes the pressure off. And if you only get one great photo per trip, at the end of the year, you're gonna have a lot of great stuff to look back on. As you can see here, we're pretty much in a wetland or a swamp. And this is where birds like to hunt a lot of the time, right on the coast. So that's where we are. So my next tip is to really be prepared. Wear a nice warm jacket, wear boots, cause you will be traipsing through the mud and the water and all that nasty stuff. And I'd be pretty miserable right now if it wasn't for my awesome boots. So make sure you come prepared. And if you don't really know what the animals that you're kind of trying to get are doing right now, join a local wildlife group, go online. There's lots of groups for that and find out where they're going to be, what they're doing this time of year, and just do a bit of research before you just head out there in search of whatever. Don't get me wrong. When I see a break in the clouds, I love to grab my camera, get in the car and go out shooting. But honestly, the best photos are going to come when you're super prepared and you know what to look for, you know where to go. And well, of course you're patient. Just don't forget that there's lots of other amazing things in nature too. Landscapes, just because you've got a huge telephoto lens doesn't mean you can't get some amazing landscape photos. Look how beautiful it is out here. And yeah, it might not work out perfectly for what you're looking for, but if you keep an open mind, then well, you just might get lucky and see something that's there where you might not have if you were just really focused on getting that one bird shot that might actually never materialize. Oh, here's a bird. Let's see if we can get him. If the birds really aren't coming too close to you, try and incorporate the landscape so you get something neat. They're not gonna do what you want, that's just nature. Pack light, that's definitely another tip I have for you, is just only bring what you need, don't overdo it because, well, that's just more opportunity to miss the shot. So what are my overall thoughts about the Sony 200 to 600? I think this is really the best birding lens that you can get for the Sony system right now. Nothing else really compares when it comes to the reach. You can use crop mode and get even closer. The teleconverters, of course, are also compatible. So for birds, there's just nothing really that's comparable, except for maybe the 100 to 400. But again, you're gonna get probably about a third less reach. And for birds, in a lot of cases, that just really matters. So this is, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna give it the award for the best birding lens that you can buy for Sony. Not surprising. Like I said though, it is big, it's heavy, it's a burden, but uh, pack light and it really won't matter. Bring what you need. And this thing for birds just gets absolutely five gold stars. Let's see if we can find some. Sometimes it's good to embrace discomfort. In my experience, nature rarely takes the easiest path, so maybe you shouldn't either. Next, don't worry about the light all the time. You don't need perfect midday sun. In fact, it's really not that great when it comes to wildlife. Right here is the end of day sun. We got a bit lucky because as you can see behind me, well, it hasn't been very nice lately. So even if it's cloudy, you can get some amazing photos. This is nature. It rarely cooperates and it's just about getting out there. Again, I will reiterate, do not be scared of higher ISOs. It's the difference between no picture and a pretty good picture depending on your editing skills. So just get out here, put it on auto ISO and start shooting. Okay, so we are out here. It's kind of last light now, as you can see. We've got this beautiful golden sun, but it looks like our birds have kind of disappeared on us. And that brings me to probably the most important tip when it comes to wildlife and birds, and that's just be patient. It's never gonna happen when you think it's gonna happen. Don't try and chase them. The best thing to do is just find a great spot where you've got lots of coverage 
and just wait and be patient, enjoy nature. But if you go out there and you're really dead set on this perfect photo, it's probably not gonna happen because, well, that's nature. Be patient. Okay, so patience paid off. It looks like a big albino eagle looking thing has just landed in the tree in front of me. I don't know how much light I have left or what it's gonna do, but I'm gonna be patient like I preach and uh, see if we can't get a cool bird in flight photo of this magnificent beast. He ended up taking off pretty quick, but I did manage to snap one shot here. Nothing award winning, but it was still pretty cool to see. Learn your camera and learn your gear. Stay on the settings that you want. I typically stay at a really high shutter speed just in case I get some action. And in the off chance that it lands right in front of me, I quickly just turn my shutter speed down a little bit, but I typically want to have it around 2000 or above to really freeze that action in the air when it comes to birds. So if you ask me, it's better to have a little bit too much than not enough and have some blurriness where you really don't want it. So with the light dying, I started to head back and grabbed a few more shots along the way. But nature wasn't done with me and I got a bit lucky. This little beauty decided to cruise down and hang out with me for a few minutes, letting me get within about 20 or 25 feet to get some great captures. Now the Sony 200-600 does have a minimum focus distance of about 8 feet, meaning it's tailored for long distance photography. One great feature though is its image stabilization, allowing me here to get my shutter speed down to 1 200th of a second while hand holding and still get a decent shot. So overall, a pretty cool day if you ask me. I did see some scraps, I did see some hunters hunting, and I did even see some fishermen. So as long as you don't set your expectations too high, nature rarely disappoints. Okay guys, so I'm wrapping up my review of the Sony 200 to 600 here. My full in-depth review is on its way, and I pretty much have enough now. I know what I'm looking at, and I'm pretty happy with the results, I gotta say. I think it's not quite as responsive as the 100 to 400 in a lot of ways, but that quick reach, the 200 to 600 really short throw quarter turn is just amazing when it comes to target acquisition. It's just not even in the same universe. So really, really loving that. And I would love to see that on a future iteration of the 100 to 400. So as far as this thing goes, it's a little bit slow. Of course, it's not a constant aperture, which is kind of a bummer, but it isn't a phenomenal camera and the best birding lens that you can get for Sony systems. Other than that, guys, let's, uh, let's leave it at that. I'm gonna head back to the studio, check out some of my photos, and keep an eye out for my full in-depth review of this bad boy coming soon. Hopefully you liked uh, this video, guys, and if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and join the community, and as always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.